Hi everyone, Rebecca Rhodes here. In this video, I'll take you through an accelerated version of the process I used to paint this goat in watercolor. And many of these techniques can be applied to all kinds of subjects, so I hope you find it helpful as you create your own paintings. In this video, I'll focus on the head and neck, but you can learn to paint the ears, leg, and some different kinds of fences when you visit my online school where you can see the entire process in real time. Let's get started. We'll begin with the eyes, and first I'll create a gray map of the lines and shapes that define the eye. And this is pale. The idea is to simply create a guide that we can follow. We'll move into the first layer of color, starting with the lightest value. I'd like the upper eye to be darker in value, leaving it lighter in the lower part. Next, we'll reinforce what will be the darkest parts in and around the eyes, and having those dark values in place will help us to decide what to do with the colors in the iris. We'll get back to the eyes, but now let's move to the nose. By the end of this step, we'll have a gray map of the dark, light, and mid-tone values in the nose, along with the beginnings of contour and curve. Here I'm reinforcing what will be the darkest parts of the nose, and I'll begin to create the impression of contour and curve using mid-tone grays that are not quite as dark. That will do it for the eyes and nose for now. We'll make final refinements further in the painting when surrounding colors and textures are in place. Next, I'll create a pale map of the other colors that can be seen in the head and neck. And I'm seeing a pinkish color around the nose, mouth, and eyes. I'll apply just a bit at a time, softening edges. What I'm doing now is creating a pale map of where the browns will be, and eventually will create fur and go darker in value. And I'll do the same in the neck, first creating the edge around the white fur of the chin, and then fill the shape with color. And there it is. We've created a pale map of colors in the head and neck. Now that we've got some color in place, this would be a good time to create a pale blue background that will represent the sky. First, I'll apply masking fluid where I'd like to retain the white edges. Anywhere that contains darker values like brown, I'll leave unmasked. This will help to avoid hard lines that sometimes appear when you use masking fluid and there are darker values of brown coming that will cover any blue that might run into those areas. Allow that masking fluid to dry, and then we'll move into the blue background. I'll wet the paper, allowing the water to soak in until we see a shine, but no puddling. You might see that the paper is wrinkling slightly, but because I stretched it in advance, I soaked the paper for five to eight minutes in water and stapled it to gator foam board, so I know this will dry flat. As the water soaks into the paper, I'm seeing a glisten, a slight shine with no puddling, and we're ready to get the blue in place. I'll tilt the painting, allowing the color to spread evenly. For this first layer, I'm aiming for a smooth, pale application of color everywhere. You can lift out clouds with your clean, barely damp brush. And now, I'll allow the color to dry, and then decide what to do next. This is completely dry. And that thin layer of color has created a smooth, pale blue, and we can see hints of clouds. If you'd like to refine the sky further, maybe take it a little darker in the upper part. We'll dampen the paper again, once more aiming for a shine, but no puddling. And I'll take it slightly darker up here. I'm going over those clouds, but I'll lift them out again. And 
I've tilted the painting here because there's a bit of a glare from my light. At this point, you might want to move to a slightly smaller brush as you make refinements and allow it to dry. Often during the process, I like to place the painting inside a mat. I like how the sky is slightly darker up here and gradually becomes lighter in value. And now I'll remove the masking fluid with my clean fingers and thumb. Let's move back into the head and neck to focus on the fur. First, I'll create a gray map of the direction and the length of the hairs. As you can see, this is very pale, and many of these areas will eventually be a darker brown. The idea is to get a guide in place that we can follow as we go darker. And getting a map of the hairs in place now will help us to create a smooth transition from the brown into the white parts. Now that a map of the fur is in place, I can confidently move into what will eventually be brown. But first, I'm applying gray where the darkest and the mid-tone browns will be. By the end of this step, we'll have a gray map of dark, light, and mid-tone values, creating the beginnings of contour and curve and bone structure. We'll work around the white hairs using our previous fur map as a guide. After this gray map is finished, we'll apply layers of brown. Presently, I'm applying gray in what will be the darkest browns. And now I'll move into the mid-tones, those areas that are not quite as dark. What I'm aiming for is to create a smooth transition from dark to light. Do you see how we're going from the darkest, and this is not quite as dark, into the lighter fur? And that's what I'm aiming for, a smooth transition in value. We've got a gray map of the dark, light, and mid-tone values in place, and it's time to create the browns. This step is fun because the brown will appear different depending on the value of the gray underneath. If there's a darker gray underneath, the brown will appear darker. If it's lighter underneath, we'll see a lighter brown. Now, we will refine these colors, but you can already see the dark browns, some of the mid-tones, and the lighter browns. But what I'm seeing is a pretty abrupt transition from dark to light, here and up here. We'll create a smoother bridge in value by applying mid-tone browns, those values in between the darkest and lightest. You might find that the fur begins to appear a little too rough, and you can gently smooth textures with your damp brush and plain water. This will slightly soften the fur. You can even go over the white parts. I'll return to these shapes using a mid-tone brown to create a smoother transition from dark to light. And now I'm gently applying a thin layer of brown to smooth these textures and go just a little darker. We're nearing the end of the painting, and the ears are in place. And now I'll take you through how you can make final refinements to the head and neck. First, I'll look for anything that appears unbalanced or out of place. It helps to look at your painting from a distance, upside down or in the mirror. Next, I'll revisit the eyes, nose, and mouth, focusing on color and value. I often find it helpful to reinforce the darkest parts around the edge of the eye and in the pupil. 
and after that you might want to take parts of the iris darker or adjust the color. Here I'm taking the upper eyes a little darker and adding a touch of yellow to brighten the color. I'll do the same in the nose first, reinforcing the darkest parts and then the mid-tones, applying thin layers of color and sometimes textures or dots of color. I'm doing the same to the mouth, getting in some darker pinks and grays. And now take a step back and look at your overall painting. I'm looking at the white shapes, which I think have become too pale. And I'll apply another layer of gray fur to create textures. I'm looking at transitions from the brown to the white fur, bringing some brown hairs into the white shapes just here and there to create a smoother bridge from the brown to the white. Take another look at the browns. Would you like to see smoother transitions from dark to light? Adding some brown hairs will help to unify the values. If you feel like the fur is appearing a little too rough, use a gentle touch, applying thin layers of water or color with your barely damp brush. And now for the eyelashes. First, I'll create pale shapes where I'd like those lashes to be. And I'll get some hairs in place and do some smoothing. And there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I invite you to visit our online school where you can learn to paint the ears, the leg, and some fences, as well as watch the entire process in real time. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.